Woo! Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to, to today's webinar. Hey, um, while we're waiting for more, let's see here, I'm just seeing how many people are here. Okay, we got a pretty fairly good group right now already. Um, while we're waiting for everyone to show up, um, go ahead and introduce yourself in the, in the chat for you. Just, just say hello and tell us where you're from. Um, if you're here in the United States, if you're all over in Europe or wherever, all over the country, you'd like to hear where you're from. But welcome to today's webinar. Um, my name's Adam Woods, um, and I'm an author success coach here with Publish Drive. And so I'll be, I'll be hosting and leading this thing today. I'm gonna share my screen with you really quick here and get this presentation up. Give me a second. Okay, so everybody should be able to see me and the presentation. So if you're not seeing that, please go ahead and, 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 and let me know. Um, you know, while, just, just to start off, I just wanna say, you know, thank you to all of you writers out there. You know, I don't know how it was for you growing up, but for, for someone like me, some of the greatest lessons that I learned in life was a, was a story that someone told me. You know, when I was growing up around a campfire, or maybe it was something that I read somewhere, and I, and, I, and I personally know how powerful storytelling is. And so as, as writers, you know, thank you. Thank you for writing stories. Um, you know, it's, it's really cool that we live in, a, in the time that we do now because um, n never in the history of the world has it been this easy or we've had this many opportunities for creative works to get out there. It's just a lot easier to do that, whether it's, you know, in books, um, other kind of writings, or if it's, you know, you want to make a YouTube video or whatever it is, or if you, you play music as a musician, you can get your music out. We live in a really cool time. And um, this is, it's really cool. Now, the publishing industry has changed a lot over the last several years. And, and self-publishing is so huge now. And it's just there's so many opportunities now for us as writers to get our books out. Um, Okay, so okay, so the group is growing, it's getting bigger, and as you come in, guys, you're gonna get a recording of this as well. So we're gonna get started here. Um, like I said, my name's Adam Woods. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. Um, I'm an author success coach with Publish Drive, and um, I mainly write children's and young adult novels lately. Now I've written across the board in the past, but lately that because my kids are at this age where I write to them. I have a couple of teenagers and my youngest is, is seven. And so I kind of write across the board between, you know, those age groups. Um, and it's been really rewarding, but I mean, I've, I've written, you know, some adult novel. I have a nonfiction book coming out that I'm pretty excited about um, this coming spring. And uh, um, yeah, so lots of stuff in the works. I mean, I've written a great graphic novel. I started out writing screenplays. So, you know, kind of all over the place. And so I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you kind of have that same background as well. Um, so here we go. Self-publishing 101. We're going to talk about all the basics, you know, to get you from zero to a published author. And so here's today's agenda. You know, basically, I want you to know who this webinar is for. It's for, since we're covering some, some of the basics, this is for people who are newer to self-publishing. Um, you might have, maybe you, you've been traditionally published, but never done the self-publishing part yourself. So this is definitely for you. If you're, um, a new author or an aspiring author, then definitely this is for you. We're going to go over some, a lot of the basics. Now, when you register for this webinar, you should have had the opportunity to have downloaded a self-publishing checklist. Now, if you didn't do that, don't worry about it because I'm going to email it to you um, after the webinar today so you have it. But a lot of the information that we're going over is, is referred to in this self-publishing checklist. This will be great for you to have, especially for you newbies to self-publishing because then you can just kind of check off as you go how to get just this basic stuff done. Um, so like I said, after the webinar, you're gonna receive um, this, this checklist. You're also gonna receive this presentation. Um, so you don't, I mean, you can take notes, but you don't have to write everything down. So it's great for that. So I'll, I'll send that to you. And you're also gonna get a recording um, of the presentation as well. So you can refer back to that if anything. Also, I highly, highly encourage you if anything comes across here today, if you have any kind of questions that you have, we're gonna do a live Q&A at the end of this thing. So please write down your questions. Just send them into the chat feature um, on your, on your uh, GoToWebinar dashboard thingy right there. Um, and, and, I'll, and I'll get to those uh, afterwards. Now, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about a little bit of introduction of Publish Drive and then I'll get into the, 
the meat and potatoes of this of the the webinar. So now, Publish Drive. If you don't know, we're a global self-publishing platform, strictly for eBooks currently, and we're working on POD. There will be some big announcements for that coming soon in the coming months. But for now, we started out in eBooks and we are masters at it. We're excellent. Now we get your book into 400 plus retailers globally around the world. Now here in the United States, we get you to Amazon and Google Play and Barnes and Noble, Apple Books, Kobo, and 240,000 digital libraries, like tons of them. Um, but if you want your books in China, if you want your books in India, if you want your books throughout Europe, I mean, we definitely have the platform for you for all of that. Now here's part of the team. This isn't everyone. This is a picture we took six or seven months ago. I can't remember. I just had it. And I wanted to show you some of the team. All I know is that they're the, guy, the guy on the right-hand side, he's awesome. It's me. I'm just joking. Anyways, so let's get into the meat of this thing. What is self-publishing? So it's different from traditional publishing. If you, if for those of you familiar with traditional publishing, you know, it was really limited. It was really, it's still really hard to get into traditional publishing, but it was really limited, right? You'd have to write, if you were going through the tr traditional publishing process, you have to write a query letter to try to get an agent, the 80 inch age. Once they land an agent, you know, it could take a couple of years. The agent takes your manuscript and goes to uh, a publishing house, whoever that might be, and tries to sell that. You know, they market that for you and try to get that book sold to a publishing house. Then the publishing house, you know, they'll go get the book, the book cover design and the layout format and, and everything like that. And then they'll, go, they'll try to get that thing marketed and sold. That was kind of the traditional path, right? Um, big time authors, this has been a great path for them. Now, since the publishing industry has changed, you know, this, this kind of everything's a little different now. Um, now, so, so self for self-publishing, you have higher control of the creative process. You're going to have higher royalties throughout the process, and you're in charge of the total process, right? So you're now the publisher. You control this whole process. And this is a good, there's some pros and cons to this. Obviously, you're going to make more money. You have a higher percentage, higher royalty than you would if you were to give that to a traditional publisher. And, and now you have to learn the process and you have to market the book. Now, in today's, in today's landscape of this pro traditional publishing world, oftentimes you, they're gonna have you market the book anyways yourself and they're just kind of handling the process and guiding you and stuff like that. And so a lot of, oftentimes there's authors that are coming away from that. Now, self-publishing is also a stepping stone if you do want that traditional deal. If you wanna get with a, a traditional publishing house, oftentimes the self-publishing is that form. They they want you to, you know, to go out, write your book, get it marketed, and create a following. Then obviously it's a lot easier to sell your book to um, a publishing, you know, a publishing house, uh, some kind of a press. Um, and a great example of this is Fifty Shades of Grey. Now I've never read it. I know millions of people have. And uh, E.L. James, she started out. She actually started out doing fan fiction, went the self-publishing route, and then. Um, and then she got a huge deal and now she's got movies or whatever and she's doing really well. So oftentimes it's a stepping stone. Now there for other authors, they've gone the opposite direction and I'm seeing a lot more of this and this. So I don't know if you guys are fans of crime fiction. I am, I like mystery thrillers. J.A. Conrath, he also uses our platform. I love the guy. Um, I met him this just a few months ago and he's a really awesome guy. He, uh, he started out traditionally published, did it for many, many years, was very successful. Millions of books sold, but actually went and got his rights back and went to self-publishing. He just, it was a better format for him and he's made 40 times more money and he's doing really, really well. And so, you know, so we see, we're seeing a lot of these kinds of authors as well who've had traditionally published contracts, got out of those contracts and now, if they can, and now are doing self-publishing and doing really, really well. So there's, there's a lot of great stories out there, a lot of great success stories. Now, there are two major problems when it and, and headaches when it comes to self-publishing. So there's two the two major milestones here. One is just navigating the process because in traditional publishing, the publisher would have done that for you. Um, and then the second, obviously, is marketing. Now it's really important here that in, in self-publishing that I just really try to get this uh, just get this out there to you is that you have to treat self-publishing as a business, like your book is now your business. Um, you're now the CEO of your own personal publishing company. And if you treat it like that, you will see success. 
right? You have to come up with strategies and marketing strategies. You have to write a good story and compelling story and go through these basics that we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about a little bit. Um, now, out of both of these kind of stumbling blocks and headaches, navigating the process and marketing, Publish Drive has a lot of help there for you. But here, so here's the basics of what you'll need just to get your book into print. Now, like I said, we're an ebook you know, distributor, we're an ebook aggregator, the self-publishing platform. And so we know ebooks really well. We're gonna we're getting into uh, to the print side of things. For time, I won't be able to. We just don't have the time to mention everything um, that I'm gonna list off here. Just these basics. So if there's anything you, I don't mention or you want a little bit more information about, please put that in into the question box, and I'll get to it. You know, after the presentation at the the live Q and A. Um, here, so briefly, here's what you need. And depending on where you are in the process, you might know a little bit of this, or you, for, for you really new, new people to this, then this is gonna be incredibly helpful. You're gonna need an edited manuscript. I cannot stress how important this is, that you're grammatically good, that your story's flowing well, that the characters make sense, that everything is in line. You have to get it edited. You have to have the right files formatted. For print and ebooks, there's, there's two different formats that you need to do. They're really easy. Re please refer also to um, that, that self-publishing checklist that I'll either send out to you if you haven't got it already or that you've already have. That, that'll give you a little bit more information about all of this stuff. You're also going to need an ISBN number for your print side of things, but for your eBooks, you're not going to need that. Um, no longer do eBooks require that. Um, and at, at Publish Drive, we actually will give you um, what you need. It's called an ASIN. Anyways, then you're also gonna need a killer cover. You gotta have a great cover. Um, we've seen a lot of bad covers come through the Publish Draft platform. I just want you to know. Um, you gotta have, uh, you gotta choose the right, plat you know, a platform that's gonna work for you. We, we get your book to a lot of, so hopefully you'll choose, you know, for your eBooks, hopefully you'll choose Publish Drive. But I mean, we, we can really get your books out there. And also for the print side of things, you'll have to choose, you know, the platform that works for you. You got to know your metadata, and I'm going to go into a little bit of that later. Um, also, for the print side, this doesn't relate to ebooks, but for your print copies, we really encourage you to order a proof of that before you release it to sale to the public, just to make sure everything looks good. Um, and then you need to plan a launch strategy, and a, and to can you and then to, after you launch the book, to continue to market it and find the ways that work for you in those marketing. So these are just the basics of it all. As I mentioned earlier about the edited manuscript, um, when you refer to the self-publishing checklist that you have, there's really three different types. There's uh, just proofreading, there's copy editing, and there's developmental or line editing kinds of uh, manuscript editing. And whatever you, depending on what you write and where you are in the, in, in the process, you might need a different one of those. Just so you know that there's a few different kinds of editing that are available to you. Now, for your interior files, you're going to need an EPUB file for your eBooks. Now, I'm concentrating heavily on eBooks because that's what we do, but a lot of this will transfer over to your print side of stuff. But for your formatted interior files, you're going to need an EPUB file. That's what makes it possible to read your manuscript on digital devices, like on a on your you know on your iPhone, on your iPad, on your Kindle, whatever it might be. Um, for that. We at Publish Drive, if you submit your, if you don't know how to get your manuscript into an EPUB file, or you don't want to do it yourself, download the software to do it, or if you don't want to pay anybody to do it, we can do it for you. All we need is a Word document with a docx end ending, and we can convert that into an EPUB file for you. Just so you know, that's within our own platform. And real quick about the ISBN number, um, for those of you who don't know what that is. Um, it's just basically a product identifier. Um, all books have them. You've seen them on every book. You just maybe didn't realize that that's what you were looking at. But it, this is a worldwide system that's used to identify your book. And every one of your books needs it if it's on the print side. And like I mentioned earlier, you don't need it if you for ebooks anymore. So you don't need to go out and get an ISBN numbers for that. Now, for your cover, I, I, I really want to take some time to talk about this. Um, you could have the best story ever written in the history of mankind. And if your story or if your cover is bad, chances are no one's going to open that book. Um, we've all heard, you know, the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. And certainly with people, 
we want to be more aware of those kinds of things, not too judgmental. But when it comes to books, we absolutely are going to judge them by their cover. So please, please choose and sp spend some time working on this cover. Get the right people, the professionals, to, to, to get that cover. There are so many, so many bad covers that we see through our platform that either they, they won't work, they won't show up on, you know, on the book very well, on the printed side, or on the ebook side, you know, because basically it's just a little thumbnail. Like if you were to go online and look for a book that you see. And so if that cover isn't any good, man, it's really hard to sell that book. Now, the great thing about cover design is that you have lots of great options out there that are really, really affordable is what I'm trying to get out there. Can't talk. Are really affordable um, for you. So there's some places that you can go that I, these, the ones I'm going to recommend to you, they're also in that self-publishing checklist, but the ones that I would recommend to you that I've used personally, and there are others out there that I just haven't used. So one, um, one place that you could go to is like, uh, you can go find freelancers at places like upwork.com. There's others like fiverr.com. Um, what's great about those kinds of websites is that you can look at, um, the graphic artist portfolio and see if they've done anything similar to what you're doing. You can look at their reviews. You know, up, it's up front. You can figure out how much it is. It's just, it's, they're really good, good systems, but you have to do your homework. You really have to go through and, and find, you know, the right designer that's going to work for you. There's also another really cool website that I don't mind sharing. It's called 99designs. Um, I've had a lot of great experience with them. And, and for, you know, I forgot what it was, a couple hundred dollars, which is really affordable. Um, actually, people will come to you designers will send you ideas. You basically just kind of put in a description of what your book is about, maybe an idea of what you're looking for or whatever, and they'll send you design ideas. This is really great if you don't know what the cover should look like. If you don't have any kind of an idea, you could get really great ideas here. So I've used them and I've been pretty happy with them. I also use someone called thebookcoverdesigner.com that I've, I've had really good luck with. Um, and there's some other like do-it-yourself kind of options out there too, like canva.com. I know many of our users who are very visual, they can, they can, they know what they're doing kind of with stuff like that. Um, canva.com, you can just kind of create your own. It's really cool. Now, if you, if you, if you're still unsure what to do here at Publish Drive with the cover design, you know, shoot me an email, adamwoods at publishdrive.com and, and I can send you some recommendations if, if you're, if you're looking for any kind of thing like that. It's so important that you have a great cover. Now, the other one I really want to touch upon is, is metadata. Now, this is, this is a really important term, especially if you want your books to be discovered in online searches, then your metadata is incredibly important. So here's what metadata is. It's just the information behind the book. It's what makes the book discoverable. Um, it's gonna include things like your title, the subtitle. It's gonna include, include things like the author name, publication date, right? Really basic stuff but also your book description, the book blurb that goes on the back. That's really, really important. And, and the right words that are used can show up in like these search engines, right? Really important. Um, also two very, very crucial category or parts of metadata are the categories that you choose. Um, they're called bisect codes within the system. So for example, if you were to go into Publish Drive and upload your ebook, then what would happen is you would have a list of these codes to choose from. For example, I write a lot of kids' books, so it would be a juvenile fiction and then a ton of sub, 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 sub codes to go with it. Now, there are over 4,000 of these codes. It's incredibly, and it gets, it gets updated once a year. I think it just updated here a couple of weeks ago. Um, and so new ones are added every, every year. And it's really crucial that you keep updating these over the years because sometimes the bisect code that was working when you published the first published the book might not be working a few years down the road. And we've seen that actually a couple of years, two or three years um, ago, people who had used the same bisect codes today quite aren't, aren't working quite the same. So it's a really good marketing feature for you as well, just to make sure you're on top of your bisect codes. Also, when it comes to keywords, keywords are very, very important that you choose the right keywords so your book can get discovered. And so what happens when you upload a book to publishdrive.com, you're going to see, you know, all of these field, fields that, you know, where your name and your subtitle goes, if this book is in a series, if, you know, where your description and book blurb goes. 
you're going to see where you can choose your bicep codes and you're going to choose where you can enter in these kinds of keywords. Now, the process is simple. Just making sure that you find the right ones is, is crucial. Um, now, we have a tool actually to help you um, with, within your metadata. It's actually a new AI category categorization tool. For some reason, I can never say that, that word. Anyways, um, it's a new tool that we just released a couple of months ago. It's really awesome. When you go in to choose your, your bicep codes, we basically have an AI within the platform that will go through your whole book. It'll just basically read your whole book super fast. And then it'll make recommendations to you on the proper bicep codes to choose from. Um, and then you make the decision if these are the right ones. But it's been a nice tool, and we've gotten a lot of great feedback over the last month or two about it. And, and the, the great thing about it is that once we get all the feedback, our, our machine is it keeps constantly learning. We type in you know, everything that needs to learn in it, and, and it continually learns, and it's getting more robust, and it's getting better. And so um, we encourage you to go in there and play with it and let us know what you think and give us any kind of recommendations with it. But it's, it's been a really cool tool, and we've got a lot of really great feedback on it. So you can actually read it here. You can see on the, on the slide that you can see um, a blog post about it. And also, just this last September, just so you guys know, we did a webinar on metadata. We have a metadata expert. Um, she's based out of London. She works, she's worked for, with a number of publishing houses. She also worked with Pottermore, um, you know, JK Rowling's publishing thing. Anyway, she, she's awesome. Um, her name's Sophie and she has a wealth of knowledge. And actually what we can also do if you're needing help with your metadata, oftentimes we'll just have Sophie go and look at it for you and give you some recommendations for it. So if that's something that you might be interested in, just, just let us know. But metadata is so, so crucial. Now, it's worth mentioning also, there's basically in self-publishing, there's, there's two philosophies, right? Amazon is the big dog in the United States and in many parts of the world. Um, a lot of the books get sold with them. I mean, they have a huge chunk of the market. And so oftentimes what we find with self-publishers is that they'll only go with Amazon because Amazon's the big dog. And I, and I understand that. And you, I mean, you don't want to discount Amazon. You definitely want to be on Amazon. Um, but you don't necessarily want to be only on Amazon. And so we have this strategy that we call going wide. And that just means is getting into as many uh, distribution channels and networks and stores as possible. And that's what we do at Publish Drive is to get you wide, to get you into as many stores so you can maximize your royalties and try to earn, get your book in, the front of, in front of as many people as possible. And when you think about it, here in the United States, we have some, some big time stores here. Amazon's is king, right? Google Play is making a huge push here in the United States. And there's, you know, there's so many Android users now. Um, Kobo is just making a huge, huge, huge push. They, they just signed a big deal with, uh, with Walmart a few months ago. Now you can get Kobo, digital Kobo books um, through Walmart, which is a pretty cool thing. You know, obviously Barnes and Noble and their Nook, um, and Apple books. And so when you think about it, going wide, I mean, those are some major stores alone here in the United States. And then think about what you can do with 400 others within other countries. And so um, this, this going wide philosophy makes so much sense because you want to get your book as to as many places as possible. So, but it, it really, it depends on you. And so we're really big proponents here of getting your book wide to as many people, as many devices, as possible. Now we've done a number, we've done case studies and everyone that we've looked at and done, the person has made twice as more, twice as much money, which makes sense. And so, you know, these are some things to think about. Um, we also find that it's easier to get reviews, which is a huge uh, selling tool for you, a marketing tool, and it's easier to get um, on search engines. So it's really, really cool. So think about within your own personal self-publishing journey, your, your strategy. Are you an Amazon person only or are you going wide? And we're big proponents of, of actually going wide. Now, there's some, um, I, it, you know, our next webinar will be about marketing, a, a lot of marketing topics. But I, it's worth mentioning here um, because you, you, you need to plan some kind of a, a launch and marketing strategy. Now, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do there. I just wanted to mention a few things that Publish Drive can help you out with. Um, we have something called the review copy. I just mentioned in the previous slide that you need reviews. And reviews are so important. The review copy, you, we can send secured review copies through our system 
right? So, so no one could just steal your file and just give it to whoever they want. Uh, but you could send this to journalists and reviewers or whoever, and so they can give you re these reviews. It's a really, really cool system, how you can do it. You can access it actually right through our dashboard. Um, you used to have to email support for this. Now it's, you can access it right through our dashboard. It's really, really great. We also have um, a featured positions um, option as well on, into, onto the different platforms. For example, we had Kobo was looking for some certain titles and that we can get them featured on those Kobo readers. And we submitted, um, we had a few, some authors send in some stuff. We submitted all five of uh, these titles. We thought they'd be a good fit for what Kobo was looking and Kobo accepted those. And so what's really cool is when you can get featured, we had an author that got featured and she sold, um, I think she was on iTunes, she sold you know, 5,000 more books than she, she normally would have. And so it's a really cool marketing feature that's built into the platform for you um, if you're interested in something like that. We also just launched something within social media. Um, if there's any kind of really cool experience that you're having, something that's really worth a social media event, something cool that has happened, you can use our network and we push that out through our, our social media channels. Um, and they're growing and growing and growing and getting bigger and bigger. But it's just another way for you to help, you know, get your name out there, especially if you're unfamiliar with social media. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, this is just a good way to kind of get yourself going or to boost something that you have going, another book, whatever it might be. Um, you just want an award, whatever. You know, it's a really cool tool for that. We also have a blog post um, on that that will be linked here um, that you can, uh, you can read if, if you like. And just to kind of recap a, a couple of these marketing features, you know, for Apple and Google and Kobo, we can get you these, these free review copies sent out so you can get those reviews going for your books. And there's some other things. I mean, um, one thing I want to mention too is that with a company like us, with Amazon, oftentimes we're called a, a, an aggregate publisher. And so oftentimes you don't have the same access with other um, platforms to the advertising within those major companies, those major platforms. For example, for example, on Amazon, on, on daily deals and monthly deals or on paid advertising services. But through our, our, our platform, you do have access to all of those things. On Kobo, you have access to those featured positions and daily deals and monthly offers and et cetera. So it's really, really cool. Um, so now, I mean, the question is, well, how do you start? It's really simple. You go to publish, you go to our website, go to publishdrive.com, upload your book, select your stores, release them. It's, it's really that simple. Now we get you into the major, because we have 400 stores, each of those different channels, each of those different stores has their own release kind of time, but we get you into the major ones um, ASAP. And then the other ones, they, they, they come in and you'll start to see those on your own dashboard. Um, our support team here is so awesome. Um, they are so good. If you need to have any questions about anything, please reach out. We're here to help you. Also for you, I'm a you know I'm the, the author coach here as well. So if you need any help with anything, you have available to you, and this is free, one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Basically, it's you and I have a conversation. Unless I, I'll put you with somebody if it's somebody else. If it's a, like a really specific topic, like for example metadata, then I would send you to a metadata expert that we have on the team, Sophie, that I mentioned earlier in London. Um, but if these one-on-one -on -one coaching calls are great, if you just need to get some you know some ideas off your off your chest, if you're if you're stuck, it becomes a strategy session to get you moving forward. So these are available to you. You just shoot me an email. It's really simple. Um, now I know that's that's kind of a lot of information, and I've sent you a lot of different stuff. Um, but there's there's I'd like to hear your questions, um, and like to just kind of see what you guys got going on here. So I'm gonna go over to the question box and see if anybody has any questions. Let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you guys could just see me. All right, all right, here we go. Um, let me see here, Mike. Oh, hey, Mike, welcome. I'm just going through here. Mike's from Kansas City. It's chilly. Hey, I, I just want you guys to know, I moved, I'm from California. I was born and raised there, but I just moved to Salt Lake City a few months back. My wife got a job out here, and I, wrote, I work remotely, so it's pretty cool, but um, this is my first time shoveling snow in my entire life. It's been crazy. And it's been chilly. I can relate. Um, oh, Phyllis, welcome from Brooklyn. Sandra from New York, welcome. Okay, we got a question here. Does the currently available marketing features cost anything? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, 
those those do not cost anything. These are these are free features. This is these are just new marketing tools that are free at no cost to you. Um, really really cool. And so sorry if I did not make that clear. Um, let me see here. Cynthia has a question. Do you publish picture books? Absolutely, 100%. I'm a children's writer, and we do we publish uh, we publish picture books. Um, so um, just kind of a, a pro tip when it comes to the ebook, the digital side of things. You depending on your what your genre, what kind of children book children's book that you have, um, you, you definitely will sell more in print when it comes to the picture books. Um, but with uh, when it comes to ebooks, you would still sell some. I still, I, I sell, you know, I still sell ebooks, children's ebooks, but the majority of them are going to come on the print side, um, on the print side of things. Now, one, uh, let's see here. Okay, and okay, here we go. Aniko, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Do you think it's better to sell books for very cheap at the beginning? to get lots of readers. So that's a, actually a really, really good, great, fantastic question. Thanks you for bringing that up. So we actually have on our, on, our, on our blog, an article about this, how you should price your books. Now there is a wide, there's a, tons of opinion on how you should price your, your eBooks and how you should price your print books. There's lots of opinions out there. So on the eBook side of things, we have seen this strategy where you sell it cheaper in the beginning or if you're in a series, sell it for 99 cents and to get them to buy the other series, maybe a 399 or whatever that may be. So the average price ebook is priced anywhere between 99 cents and 399. Now I'm not saying you can't break those rules. What I am saying is that just, that's just the average that we see, especially through our platform. And you got you guys gotta understand we have tens and tens and tens of thousands of books that come through our platform and we see, we see just the pricing that works the best. And we've seen that the 99 cent, the 399 book. Now, depending on your genre and depending if you're in a series or not, we've seen that 590, I have seen personally that 599 pricing scheme work really, really well. But what is across the board, what everyone agrees on is that, especially if you have a series, if you sell the first one cheaper to get them in and then sell them up, sell the other ones for a little bit more afterwards, that is a really great strategy. I hope I answered your question correctly. Diana, Diana from New York, what's up? What does a happy happiness agent do? Yeah, we have really funny names here. That's a great question. One of the slides said happiness agent. Um, she basically, that's it. Her job is to keep you guys happy. If there's any kind of issues or any kind of support problems or whatever that you run into with your books, stores not working, whatever it might be, that's where they, she'll come in. Um, that's when they'll come in and help you with that. Their, their job is to keep you happy. <laughs> um, and they're really good at it. So great question. How do we as writers, oh, so this is from Carrie. How do we as writers pay published drive for services and what is the cost percentage? That's a great question. So I actually have a slide about this then uh, for when I redid this presentation, I took the slide out. That's completely my bad. Thank you for asking that. So um, there's, there's it's, we have a really great pricing model here. Um, so if you were to, we don't make money unless you sell books. That's how it is. There's no upfront fees, no cost to using the system in that way. We take 10% of, of the list price of the book whenever you sell a book. So for example, say you're on iTunes and you sell a book for $10. I'm not saying that you should go price your books, your eBooks for $10. I'm just using this as an example, uh, easy math. So you sell your book for 10 bucks. Um, on, on Amazon, Amazon or whatever on, on Apple Books, they're going to take 30% or $3. Um, Publish Drive will take 10% or $1. And then you would keep 60% or that $6. Um, and so that's how the pricing structure works for that. Now, recently, Publish Drive just, re uh, just released a new pricing model. And this model only works for people who are who are having higher volumes of sales, meaning if you're earning $1,000 or more from your ebook sales every single month, then this, this pricing model works for you because it is what, it's just a subscription then because it saves you a lot of money. So what happens is that what we wanted to do is keep you guys happy. We wanted to, I mean, the 10% works great, especially for newbies. There's no upfront costs and you're just, we just take a 10% percentage. 
um, from your book. However, for those authors who are really start to pick up traction and they're selling thousands and thousands of books every single month, and that 10% starts to hurt. And so we wanted to save you guys money. And so we, we opened up a, what's just a subscription model. And so basically for $100 a month, uh, you can upload up to 100 books and keep all of your royalty. We won't take the royalty. And so it, it works really great for authors who have a, a lot of books out there because we have authors who have, you know, depending on what they write, I mean, lots of books, 40, 50. And then I, you know, no low content books. We've seen authors with thousands of books, right? And so, and those, and that kind of scale, that works really good. So the subscription model, that only works for you authors who have higher volumes of sale. For you other off, authors, when you first sign up, we just, you're just automatically enrolled into a 10% royalty, what we've done for years. Um, it's very industry standard and it's a really great deal um, for you until you build up. Once you start building up and you get to, like I said, anytime you're making over a thousand dollars a month from your eBooks, then the script, subscription model is going to make a lot more sense for you. So that's a great question. Thanks, Carrie. What is the minimum quantity one must order? So Cynthia, you're talking about on the print side of things, and I'll be able to answer this question at the beginning of, of the new year when, when we dot, when we've been working on print on demand, like the print side of stuff within our own platform for many, many months. And we just want to make sure it's done right. And so early sometime next year, I'll be able to answer that. And so there are some other platforms, depending on the print service that you use to get your book printed, that will require some kind of, um, you know, some kind of minimum quantity sometimes. Um, when it comes to print on demand, I, this is actually worth mentioning for some of you who are new. Um, print on demand is a service where you don't necessarily have to order a minimum quantity. It's just what happens is someone goes on to, you know, a store, say they go on to Apple Books or Kobo or Amazon, wherever, order one of your books, then it's just actually printed very quickly and then shipped out to the customer automatically. So, um, so for the print side of things, um, we don't offer that yet, so I can't answer that. It depends on the different services, print services. But check back in in a couple of months, early next year sometime, and I'll be able to answer that question more specifically. Now, when it comes to eBooks, obviously you're going to own the EPUB file. There's no quantity that needs to be ordered. So, I hope that uh, I hope that answers your question. Okay, another question from Diana: What percent of eBooks do you sell, Adam? Photo Kids books compared to print books? So, um, it's it's there's a it's like 90% print books when it comes to my kind of children's books. Um, I can't speak for all authors. Um, when it comes to the children's side of things, or if you're, I know Diana's, uh, she's coming out with this really cool, like uh, a foodie type of book. She's a chef. And so um, you will, those, you, you might be in the same kind of percentage somewhere around there, 10, 20% might be eBooks, whereas 80% um, might be print books. Now, I just want you to know, depending on the genre that you write, like the majority of self-publishing authors are going to make the majority of their money from eBooks. Depending on that, that changes depending on genre. But if you're in crime fiction, romance, uh, sci-fi, space operas, all of that kind of stuff, almost 90% of your revenue will come from eBooks. It's just such a huge market for that um, right now. Just so you guys are aware, for self-published authors, the majority are going to do that. You can still get your books. You'll still sell print books. Don't get me wrong. You will, but for the majority of authors in most, I guess, a big chunk of the genres that are out there, um, most of those books are going to be sold uh, via eBooks. Now, children's is just a little different. I read a little different, but young adults, the same thing, same way though. Um, it's going to all be, most will be through eBooks and stuff like that. So that's a, that's a really, really great question. Another question. With finding a title and subtitle, does it matter? If you have one or two subtitles. Oh, so that's a, oh, Diana, we just had a conversation about this. That's a great question. Um, so in our, in our last, it, it, go check out our metadata um, webinar that I, I'll, I'll leave a link for you guys here in that, in that presentation that you can go check that out or you can go to the Publish Drive YouTube channel and find it. Because Sophie goes, our metadata expert goes into great depth and gives a lot of information about using titles and subtitles. because when you, when you go do a search, or for example, on Amazon or whatever, when you're doing a search, 
it, it'll it'll take into account your title and subtitle those keywords that are in the, in those titles and so you don't necessarily have to put those same words into your keyword slots on your metadata in fact you shouldn't and so you should choose other keywords and so it's just a pro tip there um, as you guys get going but go check out that metadata webinar because she goes into great detail about that she's it's really great um do you have so mike's asked do you have some kind of pay portal to handle the purchasing of books from various platforms taking the company's cut pay to the author etc i think you mean oh, i just want to make sure i'm understanding uh your question mike do you have some kind of pay portal to handle the purchasing of books from the various platforms taking the company's cut and pay to the author so yes i think i if i if i'm understanding your question correctly. So on, on Publish Drive's platform, um, within the your own personal dashboard, you're gonna have things there that are awesome. First of all, you're gonna have analytics like you've never seen before. I mean, it's like a book report on steroids. I mean, it is this thing is awesome. But basically, you could filter through, have all sorts of fancy graphs, and see where you're selling books. You could print reports from there, so you'll know. Um, and what happens is, um, You'll always, you're always going to know which of your titles is selling the best and which uh, store it's selling the best, if it's in Amazon or Kobo or, or Apple Books or whatever, Barnes and & Noble, or, and in which country it's selling the best. So you're always going to know that. Um, within the system then, yes, the payment processing is handled through us. You guys do not have to worry about that with this different stores. What will happen is, is that you'll get a statement every single month, and then we'll send – basically, you'll we'll, – we'll send you – money into your bank account you just got to connect your bank account or whatever it's really really simple process when you log in and, and you'll, you'll be able to see that um, but the dashboard is excellent for that you're always going to know you're going to have reports available to you lots of different graphs to be able to filter through and then we handle the payment and you just you actually just get paid what well, we the, the actual processing of, of all of that gets handled um, through us and with the different channels so you know with amazon and barnes and noble and whatever it comes through us and we handle it for you. So, Mike, I hope I answered your question. Nico, I think, uh, please tell me she has another, uh, you have another question. Please tell me I'm saying this right. Do you think it's worth to use Facebook ads or what is the best way or platform to as advertise your books? That's great because I had to remove that, just that, that slide I have. That's a great question. So, yes, I say yes to Facebook ads, but I also say there is a learning curve to using Facebook ads. Um, there is a there is a learning curve just like in anything to do it because you can lose a bunch of money and so there's actually quite a bit of resources out there to help kind of help you along that but yes i say yes to facebook ads especially once you get good at it and whatever if you if you're within the united states or whatever and you, you get really good at it so it makes it a lot easier to go into other countries that have facebook to market your books for example if you want to go into germany then it's a great way you already got it nailed down and so yes but there is a learning curve um, there's, there's another platform that we have no affiliation with. I just want to mention them because a lot of authors have had success with them and that's BookBub. Um, um, it works for a lot of the genres and for some genres it won't work very well. But BookBub is just a collection of millions of readers and you can advertise through them. And it's really great for book launches and stuff like that. I've seen a lot of great stuff um, to get your books launched with that. Now, we'll, I'm going to go into more detail about stuff like this in our next webinar, Marketing 101, and we'll have a date for that and, every, and links for that if you guys want to attend. Um, but yeah, there's, 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 there's lots of ways to advertise your books. And then within each of the different platforms, so Amazon Advertising, right, they have their own, their own thing. We have a great announcement about something about this next, next month so, um, um, that we've been working hard on. So yeah, stay tuned for that. But there's, yeah, lots of ways to market your book that are paid and organic and or just basically non-paid so great question what about another question from diana what about titles and subtitles for the cover does it matter if you have two subtitles so when it comes to titles and stuff like that i'm i always refer to the pros about that um so yes you can have multiple titles i just don't know if it's the best idea um so so diana i don't know quite how to answer that question for you um 
I would say have one subtitle. That would be my, 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 my opinion. It's just, if it gets too wordy, not the greatest, not the greatest. Anyways, maybe someone else who's, who's a more, you know, expert on the, the, gra- the design and stuff like that. Uh, but definitely check out the metadata thing. Cause Sophie goes into that about, she gives a lot of tips on advice about that. Uh, oh, I answered that for Mike. Great. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Oh yes, Mike, it is, it is pretty seamless to get paid. Yeah. Pretty easy. We make it easy. And then we'll ask question. Here we go. What's the best way to advertise a book on Facebook through quotes? Um, all right. So personally, I have not, I'm not a, a Facebook advert. Ex, I, I actually pay people to do this for me. Um, because I just don't have the time to figure it out myself. And so I'm, she, she's, the question is, what's the best way to advertise a book on Facebook through quotes? She's asking, is it through quotes? Um, no, I've seen excellent book trailers and I've seen horrible book trailers. I've seen excellent ways through quotes. I've seen excellent, just a quick blurb or whatever. Um, um, but I, because I'm not an, like a, a social media advertising expert, I always, I just, I pay people to do that for me. Um, there are great books out there um, about it and great video tutorials. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be interviewing as soon as we can get it launched. Um, some, some really cool stuff about talking to experts about this kind of stuff, just so you guys have the information. And so, um, oh yeah. And so I forgot to mention this, but join our Facebook group. It's called write more, worry less. And we're going to start putting some really, we already put great content up there, but you're going to start seeing some really, really cool stuff come across there. And, um, and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, because uh, you'll see a lot more videos come through about stuff like that. Anyways, guys, hey, I just wanted to remind you, you're going to receive this recording. You're going to be emailed and, and you, you'll receive uh, the self-publishing checklist again, and you're going to receive this PowerPoint. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. I really want to thank you for attending. I hope it was helpful. Um, you guys are the best. Thank you for writing. Keep writing. Keep working hard. Use platforms like us so we can handle the, the admin stuff and we'll get you paid. Just keep writing. Get out there. Figure this stuff out and stay tuned for some really, really cool stuff that we have to offer. Thank you again for all the great questions. I'm going to end the meeting. You guys rock. Take care.